This episode of the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast is sponsored by Jamie's Designs, your one-stop shop for custom laser creations, gifts, and home decor. Looking for a special present for a loved one? Stop by Etsy at Jamie's Designs Shop. Or visit us on Facebook or Instagram by following the link in the show description. Or type at J-A-M-I-E-S-D-E-S on your device. We are making your laser dreams come true. Welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host, Emmett Muckles. Please visit iTunes, Stitcher, or EmmettMuckles.com to listen to all the episodes for free. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast with your host and that guy, Emmett Muckles. Emmett and friends, that's what I like to call it. You know, I'm always looking out for you. Today is a day that you are given one more chance. And I suggest that you realize that it is a new opportunity for you to begin again. If you are successful at what you are, today is a day for you to have a new objective. Today is a day to develop into something that will inspire you to go on to the next day. So today, in this time of COVID-19 and our new paradigm ship, we're going to talk about money. And I got my man here, Eric Wheeler. How are you, Eric? Doing great, Emmett. Thanks for having me on the show today. So I'm, I, I ask everybody this, what got you to now? My story goes back, I, I was about 26 years old and uh, my grandfather uh, just passed away and we, we were lived in a small town and he was almost, we were so close in age, he was almost like a father to me. And I just remember, you know, the line around the funeral home was uh, out to the sidewalk and around the end of the building. And it just recalled all of the people and the great things that they had to say about him. Yeah. Uh, he had been successful in his own right as a business owner and entrepreneur. And what was great is he, he really, because of his success, you know, it, it was ingrained in him to help other people anyway, and he would have done it anyway, but he was in a better position to really help others either financially or, you know, just giving them the time to, to help him, give him some encouraging words or give him some advice. And I just wanted to be more like, like him and help other people to be more like that. Uh, so that, you know, a lot of people make a lot of money, but they're insecure about it. And so <laughs> I really want to help people, you know, get more comfortable with their, their wealth, understand what they can do so that they can turn around and, and help other people the way that he did. I don't understand the statement you just said. You said people are, are, I'm trying to recall the statements. You said people are insecure about their wealth. A lot of people just, you know, either they don't feel that they have enough or they're afraid that they're going to lose it or, you know, that they, you know, maybe for some reason, you know, they don't feel that they deserved it. But for the most part, it's, it's, you know, people that have accumulated, they've been successful. The biggest fear that they have a lot of times is that they're going to lose it. And so many times they try to hold on to it too tightly. So what I try to do is help them understand really what, what options are available to them and, and, and how they can you know, put themselves in a better position. All right. So right now we're in this, this, like I said, paradigm shift of a time and entrepreneur, I mean, everybody's been shaken. If you have a small brick and mortar business, um, there's a high probability that you've suffered some decimation. And if you were an interactive entrepreneur or if you, you, just any business person, they've seen everything turn upside down, so to speak. What should they be focusing on right now? Well, most entrepreneurs, you know, they've got an extremely strong desire to excel. Uh, they're typically highly competitive. They're ambitious. They're looking to achieve you know, many of them at the highest level that they can. And mm -hmm. so here we are at a time where, like you say, we, you know, people have been decimated in some businesses. Others have really thrived uh, through a lot of this, depending upon what industry they were in or face mask, what pocket, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but really, uh, you know, the, 
with crisis comes opportunity. True. And so I think, you know, many of them, the, the opportunity really is to, you know, sort of reset, look at where they are. And if they're not where they'd like to be, what are the opportunities? You know, do they have opportunities within their business to, you know, maybe merge with somebody else or to take out, a, a, you know, acquire a competitor or it, if nothing else, just get closer to their customers and their clients during this time and renegotiate terms potentially with suppliers. So there's a lot of opportunities that they have. And, you know, it, it, some of those are, you know, within their own business and, and some of those are, you know, outside as well. So what are some of the services that you actually offer to your clients? So people can just kind of be in the know and say, okay, maybe I do need to speak with him. Because a lot of people just don't know. Uh, a lot of people hear financial planner, asset management. They hear a lot of terms, but we're in America. And in America, they do not teach you about finance at all. So what are those things that you can assist them with? Yeah, it, it's really unfortunate that we don't require more financial literacy through school and uh, along the way. But where I help people is I, I call it wealth management because it really comes down to five pillars and investment consulting. You know, you talk about asset management. That's uh, that's uh, the thing that probably 100 percent of financial advisors do. Now, yeah. Some are better than others. But the other four areas that really fall into this uh, area of wealth management is uh, cash flow and tax mitigation. You know, we look at risk management, helping people so their assets are not unjustly taken through litigation or divorce. Most of the people are very successful that we work with. And so, you know, they want to give back. So we help them with charitable gifting strategies that have the most impact for both them as well as the charity. And then lastly, that, you know, most of the people that we work with have families that they want to pass their wealth on to at the appropriate time. And so we help them develop strategies to do that. Okay. Now, so many people right now are going through some different things. So how can they improve their situation wherever they are? You know, there's levels to this. There's some people, like you said, they're doing great. They're doing banner. They're doing a bang up job right now. And there are other people who are sitting back going, oh, my Lord, the sky is falling. They're running chicken little. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, you know, as we look again, most entrepreneurs, you know, they're they're highly competitive. They're They're driven folks. And so. You know, as they look to the future, you know, the, the big thing I think they can do is really start to look at delegating yeah. because they're very good, usually, you know, at, at something that they do within their company, something has made them very successful. But many times, you know, we, we all tend to wear too many hats. And, you know, I was listening to uh, one of your other guests on uh, on there, uh, Jake, I think was his name. And, you know, he Have talked run, about yeah. just yeah, as we run ourselves ragged and, you know, it gets into our health, it gets it affects so many other areas. And so we're, what we try to do is, you know, help these entrepreneurs, you know, take some of these things off their plate uh, through all this and really, uh, you know, delegation, uh, focus on the things that they can do well, and then turn around and, uh, you know, let people like myself take some things off their plate so that they don't have to focus on that. They can focus on their business better. Ah, um, who is your perfect client? You know, because we're talking about asset, we're talking about wealth management. What if you don't have any wealth? Well, what if you're like, I, I just don't have anything to work with now. Why? How does this apply to me? Because some people have wealth and they just don't know it. Absolutely, and and wealth means different things to different people. <laughs> yeah, and. You know, it, typically the people that I'm working with, you know, they, they've got a million dollars or more of investable assets. And because that's really who we can help, we can have the biggest impact for. But they're, you know, we, whenever we get referred to somebody, yeah, uh, we have, you know, our clients, we offer a second opinion service. And sometimes they'll send people to us and it might not be a great fit. So what, what we help them do is, you know, we'll look at their situation, see where they want to go where they are currently and where the gaps are. 
And if we can help them and have a major impact for them, you know, we may take them on as a client, but otherwise, you know, we try to set them up with somebody that might be a better fit uh, for them. Uh, you know, and it's not always driven by money. You know, sometimes we just, you know, if we really click with somebody, uh, we may <laughs> offer to be hired <laughs> just because we really like to work with them. So do you deal with trust as well, living trust or setting up trust for the future or just insurance policies? What are all is entailed in wealth management? Yeah, you, typically the trust and insurance, you know, fall under that category of legacy planning. Yeah. And so, you know, those are uh, products and services that, that we deal in. Uh, we have our own trust company uh, that can help sometimes, you know, if, uh, from a fiduciary standpoint to help with those trusts. But many times, you know, we'll work, we, we really want to work with the, uh, the, the CPAs and, and the attorneys in that case, uh, you know, to make sure uh, we take a very top down view with our clients yep. and try to make sure everything is buttoned down. So whenever we might refer a client to their, to an estate planning attorney, or if they have their own, you know, we'll review uh, those trust plans for them. And, you know, a big part of that is just making sure that it really fits because the first thing we do when we sit down with a client is go through a discovery meeting. Yeah. In that discovery meeting, you really find out a lot, you know, what do you want to do? Who do you want to leave things to? Who's important to you? And many times we've looked at trust documents and, you know, sometimes they don't exactly follow the wishes that, that the person wanted. And other times they're, you know, they're, they're great, but we've run into some situations with, you know, where there's been some changes and Oops. there's been people still in the trust that maybe, you know, they, they, they didn't intend to still have in there. You know, that's 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 a real thing, because if you have multiple um, vehicles out there and if you've been through some relationships, I discovered this myself. I was just going through paperwork and I saw that the beneficiary on a particular vehicle was my ex-wife. I was like, oh, heck no. (laughs) No, 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 no. She might knock me off and be like, I got him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that happens more than you know. I bet it does. Now, uh, there's a concept of optimal financial world. Explain that. To, I'm, I'm going to ask you about that. But I'm. But first, I would like for you to explain, just for sake of argument, what is a fiduciary? So a fiduciary means that we put your interest ahead of everybody else's. And essentially, that's the best way to explain. Uh, there's been a lot of talk in you know, in, in the papers, in the news, a lot of changes and regulations. And when it comes down, you know, to being a fiduciary, uh, it, it's really, you know, making sure that we're putting your interest ahead of our own. Okay. Now, optimal financial world. So think of it this way. If, you know, we looked at where you are today mm-hmm. and you think about five years down the road with everything that you have in place, you know, the, if the, there's really four potential outcomes, either you know, you're going to have this uh, the, this optimal financial world yep. or, or you're going to have you know, a, a good scenario. You're going to have one that is less than ideal. And then you, the fourth one is kind of a financial mess. And so as those lines, you know, leave from from here and extend out five years, they get further and further apart as they extend out. Yeah. And so, you know, when I think about the the, uh, the optimal financial world, it's really having everything buttoned down. It's having a, you know a cohesive environment where you know you're, you're, uh, the, all the people that are important to you, all the subject matter experts that you might work with, you know, CPA, attorney, insurance agent, uh, and some you know, any, anybody else that's important to you. Everything is in alignment, and it, and and your goals you know, you're headed in that direction rather than headed towards the financial mess that we talk about. And so the idea behind the, the optimal financial world is, you know, you want to start heading in that direction as soon as you can, because the lines are, are never going to be closer than what they are today. Yeah. Um, some could say that we are in a, um, a serious financial headed for a downturn. The reason I say this, is because I've been looking at the markets. Yeah. You see in the stock market go, go up, but, my understanding is this. The government right now is paying people to stay home. In my fact, that weakens the dollar. 
on the opposite, on the other side of that, at some point they're going to stop. I don't think COVID is going away anytime soon. So all of a sudden, all those forbearances and all these things are going to go away and people are going to be back to where they were pre COVID. But are they equipped for it? Do you think that's going to have an impact on, um, people's bottom line here or is there a certain planning that you can take into consideration to kind of offset that? Well, it's a great question because, and and I get asked that a lot (laughs) right now, you know, what, what, what's in store for the next three months or six months or, or I, we tend to take an approach of looking longer term. And, and I will tell you that, you know, back in, in March when things got so bad, you know, I had a lot of these conversations with my clients and they were asking questions about it. And, you know, for the most part, our feeling was that we would recover and we would recover much quicker than what anybody thought. Oh, yeah. And and, and I will tell you, it recovered as far as the market, the S&P 500 recovered much quicker than even what I thought yeah. during that time. Um, it's It was driven, you know, mostly by a lot of technology and biotech stocks and then you know, some of the ones that are really, you know, been in a great position uh, through all this, you know, what that means long-term, you know, I've always heard don't fight the fed and you know, the fed has interest <laughs> rates basically at, you know, close to zero. Yeah, they You've do. got, you know, you do have the government basically paying some people to stay home, but the economy's not been as bad as what a lot of folks would have thought at this time. And back in March, it was doomsday. It was going to be 30% unemployment you know, I think the last number we saw was somewhere just a little bit north of 10. So, you know, things are, are better than what they anticipated. I wish I had a crystal ball. Mine broke back in 07. Um, so when, when we had the last financial crisis, I remember that. So I don't know exactly how this is all going to turn out, but generally what we try to do is plan for five years and, you know, without getting into much detail, there, there are some ways that, you know, we can help insulate portfolios over time. And then, you know, that really comes down to the individual person, uh, you know, what what fits best for them. But um, it, it, looking at the longer term, I think, helps smooth out some of these ups and downs. Well, you know, you say there's three important factors necessary to keep a team um, for a virtual family office. And there are some businesses out there who are family owned businesses. There are small companies or even if they're not blood related they act like a family. How do you keep this stuff together? Because like when you're an entrepreneur, um, your team is your all. And it's more than just money. You're thinking about the livelihood. What are some of the necessary things that they can keep focused on? And I know you mentioned a few earlier, like you need to really hunker down and, and get efficient on it. But are, are there any other factors that can aid them in it? Well, let me share with you, you know, this virtual family office that, that we try to help our clients with where, you know, we're coordinating all these efforts with the CPAs, with the estate planning attorneys and the insurance agency. What we try to do there is focus on three areas, uh, the human element and making sure, you know, everybody's on the same page, making sure there's deep understanding uh, we, we do that through discovery. I mean, I think a lot of your family uh, businesses, you know, they know each other, but it's all, it's a great opportunity. We do rediscovery with our clients yeah. where, you know, we'll sit down, you know, once a year and, and kind of reprioritize what's important uh, to them. And then we make sure, you know, everything, we got a cohesive team. Make, let's make sure that, you know, everybody's on board. We've got all the elements that we need there. And that they're they're top notch, they're experts in, in their field, and then focus on the you know the systematic processes in, in there to make sure that everything is going as, as smoothly as it can. And I think that translates not just from you know what we do, but into most businesses. If, if they had all of that, you know, they're, they're clicking on all cylinders. You know, those would be areas that uh, that would be working very well for them. All right, let's define virtual family office. What does that consist of? So that my audience and myself can be <laughs> absolutely clear. <laughs> well, the, the concept goes back to the sixth century. You know, the King steward was basically uh, responsible for managing the affairs of the castle 
uh, it might be you know, managing some of the affairs uh, of, the, uh, of the royal family and handling personal matters for folks. Well, then you fast forward that to the 19th century and, and really, you know, the Rockefellers, J.P. Morgan, yeah. uh, Andrew Carnegie, you know, they really implemented these family offices. And what it meant was, you know, they had all the people in one office that was available to them to take care of really all the matters of the business, all the matters of the family. And so, you know, as we look and we we take that now to the last couple of decades, this, the opportunity, you know, you have both single family offices, which is what I just described there, where you've got an office that's, that's there at the serving one family. Yeah. And then you have this multifamily office, which is there to serve maybe not quite as wealthy families, but it's, you know, they're, they're serving multiple ones at those levels. But these are, you know, $100,000 million worth of salaries. The virtual family office, where we're coming to, it really is to make this available to the not so wealthy yet. And it's a way to, you know, integrate our services with either their CPA or, their estate planning attorney and make sure that we're coordinating all these things. And we live in a virtual world today. So, yeah, it's, we do. you know, we can do that collectively. We used to meet with everybody and, you know, we would sit down and go through, you know, you know everything that pertained to this client, the discovery, take a look at where they are, where they're trying to go and collectively bring an idea to the client that says, you know, we've vetted this out. We're all on the same page. We're, you know, we're recommending this to you, Emmett, you know, you need to do this we've all talked about the pros and cons of it and we are all in belief <laughs> because I can't tell you, you know, just like the estate plan, the trust you were talking about earlier, you know, how many times these things are done in silos and, you know, either the financial advisor put something together that, you know, is not tax efficient for the client ah. CPA and one thing, uh, you know, it might be a, a kind of a retirement plan for the business, but you know, the CPAs are working on something else. Yep the estate planning attorney doesn't know about, you know, this or this issue or that issue. And, and so when they're done in silos, many times there's room for mistakes yeah. and it doesn't always serve the client the best. So with this virtual family office, it's the idea is let's get everybody together in one room or on one zoom call right? <laughs> and, we, <yeah. laughs> and, and work on the client's uh, issues collectively. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now I'm, I'm going to di- diverge a little bit here. So someone's 30 years old, 35 years old. They're not quite at the capital level where they're working with you. What are some of the vehicles or what some of the strategies that can help them to get there? Well, again, that that always varies depending upon their situation. And, you know, I have to be a little careful in mentioning certain things because my compliance department, as we were talking beforehand, it, it, you yeah. know, handcuffs us a little bit in terms of what we can say, but generally, you know, somebody that's at that stage of life and they're looking down the road, you know, most of the time, you know, they're, if they're open to taking risk and have a long-term time horizon, you know, there may be an opportunity to do some things with more growthy type investments and, you know, there's, there's no, <laughs> there's no lack of, of, uh, available types of instruments like that out there. So okay. again, it would it'd be something where we'd sit down and, you know, have a discussion and, and kind of share some of those different ideas. Cause you know, some work better than others. I understand. Well, what is your plan? Because like I said, in the, in the last six months, we've had a dramatic change. Where do you see yourself in about, 12 months. How do you see yourself moving through this landscape? Well, we're just planning on having a lot of discussions with clients and really making sure that their plans are on track and, you know, seeing where the gaps may be, seeing where, you know, if a lot of people's situations have changed. And as I mentioned before, you know, the rediscovery, that's really something that we're focusing on right now and really stress testing a lot of the plans because as you say, things have changed. And so we start to look, you know, people's, their, their tolerance for risk has changed. Oh, yeah. Sometimes, you know, their, their time horizon has changed. 
the, you know, many things personally, some of them have lived at home with their, you know, with their kids and thought they were going to run the business. And now after spending six months at home with them, decided maybe they're not the ones that are going to run the business. So we need to think about something else. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's spending a lot of time really, you know, re-identifying uh, what people's goals and objectives are, and then stress testing those plans to see if th- what they have in place right now will get them where they want to be. All right. You don't have to answer this next question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> in the last six months, have you noticed an uptick in couples coming in to divide assets? <laughs> I have not had any. Okay, cool. Well, I, just, I mean, you didn't have to answer it because I know <laughs> you guys got rules that you can discuss certain things or say certain things. So I understand that. But uh, how can people find you? Well, I have a website. It is Wheeler, WM, like wealth management.com. And that's probably the easiest way. And if somebody wants to sign up for a second opinion and stress test in here, they can, uh, uh, there's a Calendly link on there. They can sign up through there. All of our phone numbers are there as well. Are you guys doing any um, Zoom meetings, uh, webinars, uh, any strategy breakout sessions, anything like that during this period? Yeah, we have quite a few things uh, that are going on. And one of those uh, actually is going to take place here in about two weeks. Uh, So I don't know when the show will be published, but uh, we'll be doing one on the estate planning, uh, working with a local estate planning attorney on just, you know, updates uh, based on where we are and some of the changes in tax law. And we're planning on doing some other ones. the, uh, uh, you know, mostly on financial planning matters. Okay. Uh, but we also have, if somebody's interested, usually Raymond James does a monthly uh, update as far as the forecasting for the market. And that's done by our market strategist uh, from the home office. So if anybody's interested in that, they can email me too. Uh, my email is eric.wheeler at raymondjames.com. And, you know, we can get them set up for that meeting. And that's W-H-E-E-L-E-R if you're not watching the video on YouTube. (laughs) Well, I want to thank you so much for being on the Billionaire Lifestyle Podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. This has been fun. Cool. Ladies and gentlemen, remember what I said. We are all billionaires and it's not necessarily about money because believe it or not, the money that we have, it's just a thing. It's something we place value upon. It could be rocks. It could be rocks with with numbers or little scratches on it, and they could do the same thing. Life is about living. We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. And I always say that we're magicians because we can conjure stuff out of nothing. And it's really simple. All you have to do is think it and then act upon that thought. So you could say tomorrow... I am going to run five miles and you get up and you run and you ran five miles or you're going to say, I am going to and fill in the blank and it can happen. We are part of the universe. We are part of the omniverse. We are fractal, which means if you go way out in the space, you see these little dots. And as you get closer, the dots take form. And then if you go deep into us, you see the dots again. The dots are called cells. And the cell constitutes the self. When your cells get hungry, you feed them. You're not hungry, your cells are. Remember, we are all billionaires. Two to the power of 30. When your mommy and your daddy got together, they shared some information. The cosmic little dust sprinkled on that dance. Two to the power of 30. So two became four, four became eight, eight became 16, so on and so on. For 30 days, you were a billionaire and you hadn't hit the planet yet. So, here's what you do. Live in the now. Prepare for tomorrow by seeing Mr. Wheeler. And remember, you are loved. If you don't believe it, look in the mirror and just say, hey, I love you. Till next time, I love you all. Peace.